Hello, brethren, beloved of God, co partakers of this heavenly convocation that we have in the Lord. The Lord keep you, and may we all be strengthened and rooted in love, rooted in the things that pertain to the Father. Okay, so that nothing is missing, we are complete. We remain complete in Him. Okay, our calling is celestial. You know, we have been redeemed from among men. We are no longer mere mortal men. Our high calling is to return to the life of the eternal Lord of glory. So we have been taken away from among men. The book of Revelation, 144,000, redeemed from the earth. They've been redeemed from among men. They are no longer men. Now this is a reality that every child of God must realize. We are no longer among those who dwell upon the earth. We are no longer among the nations of the earth. But we are from above. We are from above. A city set upon a hill. Divine. Our conversation, our fellowship is in heavenly places in the Lord, in the Spirit. Not with men and not with the things of this world. The things of this world, like we know, are passing away. They are not real. They look as though they are, but they are not real. So we ought to turn away from this world. And our focus has to be on the celestial things of the Father, which endure forever. There is life, there is joy. It's a reality to be experienced by every child of God. So you just, every man of God has to remain steadfast, not being moved away from the glad tidings. Even if it means you are alone, lonely, it does not matter. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Jesus made a statement that I know you all will leave me, but the Father has not left me. He was entering into a new reality, a fellowship in the Father. And this is the way it was in the beginning. Before man descended out of the Godhead and put on form and started to identify himself with form and started to fellowship with men. But this ends when you hear the gospel, the good news. You are taken away from among them. When Jesus appointed 70 disciples to go forth to preach the gospel, they were to go in two by two. Now, some religious sects interpret this and they go around knocking on doors in twos. 
they go in twos and they knock on doors and preach and, and preach their type of gospel. But two is a symbolic number of the witness. What are we witnessing about? We're witnessing about the Father and the Father's kingdom. We witness concerning truth. We bear witness of the invisible celestial realm of God. Okay, I am quick to point out that the realm of God is not really invisible, but it is invisible to the natural man. A man became acquainted with form, okay. with, with the carnal terrestrial age. So he forgets the invisible realm, which is the real realm. It becomes like a far away thing. See, but there is a realm. We call it the kingdom of God, which has been before this world was. It's a realm of where all dwell in one perfect spirit. All dwell in one. It's the place of the power and the glory. So the two witnesses Bear witness about that celestial. Now, bearing witness does not just mean speaking, no. The two witnesses have to live by that model, which is celestial. The two witnesses have to live by the celestial model. Where I am is where you will be is the reality that you have to walk in today. You walk upon Mount Zion today by faith. Relate to the Father and the Kingdom by faith today. That's how you start off. You start off by faith. You embrace the invisible thing that has been revealed to you because by the revelation that has come today, you have seen with your eyes the kingdom of God. It cannot get better. We've, have a, we've had a peep into the invisible realm of God. Now you have to live in that realm. And God is faithful. This is something that can never fail. So the two witnesses bear witness about the Father and the Father's kingdom. And with this testimony, they bring healing to the nations. Those who receive their testimony healed. They are raised from the dead. Anybody who hears them, hears the Father. Anybody who sees them, sees the Father. Now you understand what it means. How, how marvelous it is. What great honor, what great love with which the Father has loved us, causing us to be called sons of God, not sons of men, not sons of, of the kings of the earth, but sons of God. That's, that's where we are. And the son of God is the only thing that the father has because the father and the son are one. See, just, just look at it in the, in the natural realm. Look at it in the natural realm. 
A man can have relations, different type of relationships, different type of friends. He can have houses, he can have material wealth. Some of these things may come, some of these things may go, but what remains is your son because your son is always your son. It came out of you. Okay? So you see, when Jesus sends these disciples out, now you, see, you can read this in the 10th chapter of the book of Luke, Jesus told them not to salute any man on the way. Don't greet any man on the way. Don't, don't stop to salute men. Just keep going. But is that possible? Jesus is not teaching you here how to become weirdos, people that behave strange, weird people who just move and you don't greet anybody. No, he's trying to tell us here that don't be yoked, don't fellowship with men. If you have the mystery of the faith, you'll be very careful not to lose it through your mingling with men in this age. Very important we understand these things. That's why at times when you have this message, Initially, you might tend to be alone, but it does not matter. Don't fellowship with men. Evil carnal communications breeds carnality in you. Don't fellowship with men would also mean don't even, don't, you know, at times these things might come in a subtle way, even a system of religion, a church. They look like brethren, like brothers and sisters, good people. Some of them are even better than you. Exemplary people would, would find beautiful families, you know, good jobs, you know, who, who go to the church every Sunday with big, with big you know, suits, the ladies with pretty gowns and with caps, you know, and people who, who, who don't smoke, who don't drink, people who don't, you know, mess around with women. And they look perfect outwardly. But test the spirit. Any spirit that does not say, Christ in me has come. Christ is not of God. Don't be sentimental about this. It's either you're for me or you are against me. You don't have to be sentimental about the things of God. Either you are in Christ or out of Christ. Either you are hot or you are cold. Don't fellowship with men. You have to learn to block your ears when you are with men. Because when you listen to men, they are like the seducing tongue of the serpent. And they breed, they, they sow seeds of unbelief, fear, and doubt. The prophet Elijah 
he will have to put his head underneath his, his legs and block his ears so that nothing will tamper with his faith. It's very important we understand this. Elisha on his way to glory will shut the mouth of the prophets. And the prophets are the brethren. You have prophets in the family altar, in the systems of religion, in your traditional setups, in the traditional setup of men and the, the beliefs of men. The prophets are, they are all prophets. You have prophets in the family, prophets in your you know, in your in your nation, prophets in the systems of religion, all these prophets don't listen to them. Shut their mouths up. Elisha on the way to glory will not be distracted by the prophets. And he came out with the double portion of the anointing. If you have the revelation of Christ. Don't allow any man, even if he's a hundred years old, even if he has achieved things in this world, even if he sees visions and he sees things of this world, don't ever be yoked with these people because there's a tendency that your faith is tampered with. It's either you are influencing somebody with the revelation of Christ or you are being influenced with the deceit of the devil. So Jesus says, salute no man on the way. It doesn't mean we become rude and nasty. No. Wisdom. Wisdom. Stay on your own. Somebody said, but well, how, how will I preach the gospel? How will I fellowship? The Lord will draw the right people to you at the right time. The Lord will bring the right people to you at the right time. Wonderful. You know when Noah built the ark? You know the animals that will enter the ark with Noah all came to Noah. Noah did not go around. Noah's work <clears throat> was to concentrate on the building of the ark. Your concentration as a child of God is to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, meaning that you exercise yourself to align with the Spirit of God. Learning to say, I am that I am. Walking in heavenly places. Exercising yourself in the faith. The way it was from the beginning. Exercising yourself in walking upon Mount Zion. Speaking the words of the Lord. Thinking like the Lord. That's how you work out your salvation. Every other thing follows. It's very important we understand these things. Say, salute no man on the way. Old friends, yes. They were old friends. Let it be a thing of the past. It does not all go well. You can be now, oh, hello, how are you? I love you. Oh, God bless you. But don't be yoked with the people of this age. Our fellowship is in heaven. Upon Mount Zion, not with men. Not with the systems of religion. Not with churches upon the earth. Not with end time movement and with groups, no. Our fellowship is in the Lord. 
Very important we understand these principles. We have power over the power of serpents and scorpions. All these things are, like I said, principalities and powers that have been put under our feet. When we bear witness, when we walk in the truth, we have overcome the world. Every power that has held us bound in the dungeons of death, we have overcome them because we have placed our love in the Lord. We've trusted the Lord. We've made the Lord our dwelling place. But we have to keep ourselves in the word of God. To walk in single mindedness. There will always be politics. There will always be things of men. Our duty is not to stop them. But our duty is to keep ourselves. Anyone that is born of God keeps himself. So that the wicked one does not touch you. The wicked one walks through the influence of the carnal mind that is in the system of this world. So salute no man. Our names are written in heaven. We are in the Father. The Father dwells in heaven. We are in God and the Father is in us. We are one. Let us do well above in this reality. We think like the Father. We see like the Father. Praise God. This is when the beauty of the creation opens up for men to see, when they recognize life in the Father. Wonderful. Okay. This is the secret of the age that has been revealed to us. We've known the Father. We've known the Son. Somebody asks, who is the Father? Who is the Son? You are the Son. And you are the Father. You are the Father who has descended into this world as the Son. That is good news. Okay, this is your bread and your butter. This is your money. This is your honey, your sugar, your everything. Praise God. So rejoice and be glad always. Never losing God. Continuing in the confession of the faith. When contradiction arises, shut it down. But remember, don't fellowship with unbelievers. You're not better than them. No. Because when you are a believer, you are still able to discern the beginning from the end. You still see Christ in the unbeliever. But the unbeliever at that point in time is not ready or he has not seen or understood the mystery. So let us keep ourselves in the faith. Praise God, wonderful. Keep yourself in the faith. I'm going to round up with a very, I just want you to read the, the book of 1 Kings chapter 13. 
okay, how a prophet was sent to prophesy against the altar in the times of Jeroboam, who was a very, very diabolical and evil king. And he went to prophesy and he prophesied how that that system was going to be destroyed by a king that is to be born. Today that king to be born, the, the, the Josiah to be born, is the Christ. He is to come and bring judgment and destroy the works of the devil. These things are already happening. Unknown to people, people have already raised up the altars of Baal. These are the unbelievers. Those who walk in the flesh. Walking in the flesh is, is satanic worship. So I just want to bring out the point here. That this prophet prophesied against the altar in front of the king, Jeroboam. Jeroboam tried to stop him and he put forth his hand to give commandment that they should seize the prophet and his hands withered. The hands just remained there and he had to beg the prophet that the prophet prayed to God to heal him. The prophet prayed to God and his hands were healed. And Jeroboam offered the prophet a gift, offered him anything he wanted. The prophet refused because he received word of God not to receive anything from any man and he should not go back the way from which he came. That he should go, keep on going. This was the commandment of God he received from God. He was to go there, prophesy, and keep on moving, not to stop, not to receive anything from men. The prophet passed this test, he rejected the gift of Jeroboam, the king of Israel. He rejected that gift. And the prophet succeeded there. But along the way, a, oh, an other person who was a prophet, an old prophet. Now remember, old prophets are synonymous with the traditions of men, the systems of religion. You remember the old time religion, the systems of men, traditions of men. An old prophet going to stop him along the way as he went forward as the prophet left the city where he had prophesied and the old prophet was able to convince the prophet told him I don't you know I'm a prophet like you I'm a man of God like you I to see visions I to have a church I'm, a, I'm your brethren And he deceived the young prophet. The prophet was instructed not to entertain or stop with any man along the way. Not to, not to, you know, to keep moving on. This is the same instruction from Jesus. Salute no man. The young prophet was deceived by the old prophet. And the old prophet, the young prophet stayed on with the old prophet. And when he continued on on the journey, he was killed by a lion. See, the lion that you have principalities and powers over, he has given us power over the serpents, over the scorpions, over the lions. 
You have given us all power in heaven and earth now. The lion destroys the young prophet because he did not obey the Lord. When you go and mingle with the old prophets, the, the old traditions of men, the old systems of religion, churches, fellowships, entire you know, systems, when you go back to fellowship with these things, if you are not wise, you will simply lose it. They cast a spell on you. Without knowing it, you leave the faith. And you wake up years later and wonder, how did I get here? What happened? I was doing so well in the Lord. What happened? Salute no man. You can read this in the, again in the book of 1 Kings, the 13th chapter. Okay? 13th chapter. And you will see all of these things I just read. Very interesting. All these things are deliberately put in the Bible for our learning. No matter how great a man might be, no matter how accepted he is in this world, I don't want to mention names, no matter how many followers he has, if he does not confess that Christ has come in me, don't salute him, don't salute any man. If you see an angel in the sky, if you see a son of God, one who speaks the same language, you can salute him. Oh, but move on. Okay, we're not here to make systems on the earth. We're not here to interact with men, no. We appear, we give the message, and we are gone. Our reward is above, not beneath. You don't need to be known by men or accepted by men. What matters is that you are known of God. Okay, so let us keep on. Let's not feel lonely or get discouraged. But let us stand our ground. Be rooted in the Lord wherever we are. Let the fellowship be in heavenly places, among the Elohims. We, in, we are in the congregation of the Almighty, not in the congregation of men. Not family matters, things of family, things of this world building. No, no, no. Not things of politics, things of, you know, things of men. Just the focus is upon Mount Zion. The Lord keep you. Amen.